you talked about the, the selection process, and you know, you gave some criteria for it, but what made you choose Tommy? I mean, was it, I know you said the book was coming out, you wanted to give some evidence for yourself, but yeah. there probably were some other people out there that probably could have used some help or some yeah. opportunity. Yeah, so, so for me, you know, it's all about, um, my, my work is really about observing, trying to observe what makes great leaders great. And, and when, when I decided to put that focus on this GTY, this greater than yourself element of that, and, and you know, started to write the book and tried to, try to flesh it out, it was, it, was, it was an even deeper sense of responsibility that, uh, that I really needed to, to set an example for the things that I'm asking my readers and my clients to do. And what was interesting about it was, it, it, as I shared with you guys before, Tommy and I had already met. Tommy and I had already formed this, this wonderful friendship. And what I came to realize is that, is that this was already there. And, and I just, it just put a framework around it. Um, because because really, the, the, it, it developed very organically. I mean, the first thing that happened, as you heard, is that he and I had, had a connection, and we really, you know, we, we just loved each other right from the beginning. And then he invited me to join the board of Up With People. So we worked in that capacity and as friends. And somewhere along the line, and this, this probably goes back to the sake effect that you were describing before, uh, we went out, I went out for sushi one night, and, uh, and, and Tommy started to share with me about what he wanted to do. Now, this was a vulnerable thing for him to do because at the time, he was the CEO of Up With People, and I was on the board, right? So that's a very, um, uh, it's a dicey kind of a conversation to have to say, you know, I, I have an obligation and, and, a, and a passion for Up With People, and as I think about my future, I want to do, you know, I want to go into that corporate thing and write my book and speak. And, uh, and I just, you know, I, that obviously that's something that I can help with. So I just wanted to do that. What happened when we put the GTY framework around it is, is that we made it um, very tangible. Right now, it's there's something about uh, formalized is not is, is probably not the right word because it has the wrong connotations to it. But but it made it, it there, there was now there was a stake in it. Now there was there was something significant. And then for those of you that have read Greater Than Yourself, um, if you're unfamiliar with my work, I write I write novels basically. So my characters are are created. Well, in in Greater Than Yourself, I actually put Tommy in the book as an example of my GTY relationship. So that's the part of the book that's nonfiction. You made me a lot and thinner in the book. I made you a lot yeah. th thinner. Tommy, your, your cheeks have nothing to do with thin or not. You just have naturally chubby cheeks, and they're just wonderful. We love them. <laughs> in fact, when you're even thinner, your cheeks are even, they're, they're just even more prominent. But anyway, <laughs> listen, here's the thing. Uh, let, me, let me just tell you, uh, not to go off on a tangent here or anything, but... Uh, Tommy is, one of the things that you've said to me since the very beginning, in many different ways, is, is, is Farber, uh, keep me humble. Because, you know, Tommy is a very giving, very, you know, service-oriented person, as you know. I mean, everything, you, you, you connected with his authenticity, which by definition means he wasn't making that stuff up, right? Uh, and it's very easy in, in this kind of work when you start to get the recognition, and now you have a New York Times bestseller, it's very easy for the ego to start to work its way in. And you've said to me over and over again, Farber, make sure you keep me humble. Okay. <laughs> so that's where that comes from. He wants to smack me right now. Tommy's going to um, turn so, this into a business opportunity. Yeah. You can, cheek it, you can tweak his cheeks for 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. but, two, but two things happen that I want to share. Um, first of all, I was with the CEO of People. I'm in Vancouver giving a speech to all the alumni in Vancouver. And he was actually at the hotel across the street in Vancouver. I, we didn't know we were in the same city. He was speaking to 1-800-JUNK, which is uh, located in Vancouver on the cell phone. And it turns out we found out we're in the same city. That's right, yeah. Uh, well, cool, and let's go have sushi. And so we had sushi. And, um, I never had eel sushi before. You ordered that. Now I eat it every time. It's, uh, that was a memorable evening of sushi. <laughs> are, you sh are you shuddering? You're shivering? You don't know, like, no eel sushi for you? Fuck. So what was beautiful about, where's your friend that I just met from San Francisco? Alexandra? We had a great conversation before, and she's was, just loved the, my message, and, you know, she's a thought leader and a, and a coach, and, but, you know, I want to get on stage and tell my story, but I don't have a story, and, and I, I just laugh because 
three and a half years ago, I'm the CEO of other people. I'm about to give a speech to alumni because other people went, went out of business, went, went bankrupt. They hired me to revive this organization. So I did a 150 city tour around the world, talking to alumni around the world to get other people back. And I went to lunch or dinner with him. And, and it was at that time that, you know, I share with him that there's something next. I'm feeling God's calling me that I'm not supposed to be running a nonprofit forever. I, I like what you do. And he, but I don't really have a story. <laughs> I mean, like, I've I just been working for a nonprofit my whole life, you know, and I don't, I, I, what am I going to say up there? And so it wasn't his GTY, let me introduce you to the publisher of Random House, let me get you an agent. And he did all those things, which I'll tell you about. But what he did was just bigger than everything is said, I believe in you. I believe you have a story in you. I, I, I believe that you are going to be bigger than me. And when I heard that, uh, it was the first time that, that, that someone like, like my father said, I, I, believe, I believe in you. There's something great in you. But I was skeptical. I never told you this. But I was skeptical of this GTY because in my past, I've been so burned and hurt by mentors. Uh, confidentially. You could shut that, that Let thing off. Let it roll. Okay. Is, um, <laughs> the founder of Up With People is an incredible man. I mean, he put... CEOs and kings and queens on his board. And he had, uh, when Martin Luther King gave the I Had a Dream speech, he had dinner with him that, that night at his house. I mean, this was a world-changing man. And uh, he picked me to succeed him. I mean, out of 25,000 alumni, he chose me to, to take over his organization that he birthed and ran for 50 years. And so he mentored me like a, like a, like a son. And as soon as I became CEO, it was like Tom Cruise in the firm, man. It was like, terrible. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a different experience, and I won't go into details because it's still running, but um, it was terrible. I was in prison for four years. It was, it was a really hard job to see a different side of this man, and it really hurt. And I've had this three or four times in my life where mentors uh, came in my life and said, I'll help you become a sales guy at IBM, then you become the top sales guy, then the mentor doesn't like you anymore. I'm going to help you here. I've had a lot of people jealous of my success. So I said, oh, yeah, this is what's going to happen. Farber's going to come in, and he's going to help me get a book, and he's going to help me a speaking gig. And then as soon as my success gets bigger than his, the GTY dies. You know, it's, it's bullshit. And that's what's real about this, is it's, it's not at all. I, I, have to, I have to, this is a really easy job for you to admit. I, I have to, uh, <laughs> ask me a question. Never mind. Uh, <clears throat> I have to say that, um, first of all, I want, to, I want to be clear. The reason that we're having this conversation is, is we want you to, to think about the, the dynamics as, as much as possible, it, it, uh, the, the things that can happen, should happen, might happen in your own GTY relationships. Um, but I, ha I just have to share with you that, that uh, it, it's a really amazing thing when you know, whenever, you, whenever you've done anything in your life, you know this, uh, that, that leads to a tangible product, whether it's, whether it's uh, not to refer to a kid as a product, but you look at your children and you say, I, I, helped, you know, I helped nurture this person to turn out to be this wonderful human being. Or you create a project at work that, that's tangible and you can look at it and you say, I did that. That's really cool. Or if you write a book and you get your first box of books and you open it up and you see your, the, the, your book cover for the first time with your name on it. It's an amazing thing. And I'd been through that experience, you know, a few times. But I will tell you that there's a different category. It, it's just, it's a different, ex, it, it, uh, it lives in a different place in the heart for me when I first saw your book. When I saw Tommy's <coughs> book for the first time, I felt... Um, I felt such, such an emotional you know, connection and response to it that was akin to seeing my own book for the first time, but lived in a place all of its own. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it, it was it's just a, a phenomenal thing to, to, to experience. Does my ego ever get in the way? You know, do I ever find myself saying, wow, you know, holy shit, this is really working. I mean, this guy, you know, the New York Times, I don't have a New York Times bestseller. This guy, uh, is there ever any of that in me? Of course there is. Of course there is. Uh, because there, there are little, those little voices that speak up every now and then just from conditioning that say, well, you know, it's, are you sure you really want to do this? But, but they're so fleeting and they're so, they're, they're natural, I think. 
Um, and I think the difference is, is choosing what to, what to identify with, right? To say, is it that imp- well, that impulse doesn't belong there because that's just silly. This impulse of that, that swelling of the heart when I, saw, when I saw his book, that's the real deal. And I think over time, it's almost like training ourselves to, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to let our own ego just kind of sit on the side for a while and really revel in, in the, the success of, of somebody else that you love. Um, that, and that sounds great, and I know that's what happened, but what happens if you're in-house? A lot of these folks are, I'm guessing, would you, are some of your folks that you're looking to have your next uh, event with, you're greater than yourself, in-house? Do you have any of you have that situation? You make in the same company, same team? Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. is it, you know, if I help you and you get so great, you know, what if you get promoted and I'm sitting here going, yeah, I put him in that slot and I never recognize. I mean, what's, what's, what, mm. what prevents that from happening? Why would these folks have the courage to try this? If there's, there could be financial or status at, mm. at stake. Do you want to respond to that? No, you got it. Um, I really have no idea. Uh, okay, next question, please. Uh, no, I, I, here's the thing. It, it's, a very, it's a very natural question. And it, comes, it comes back to that conditioning that we have that, that we really believe that business somehow is, is, is zero sum, right? That uh, now, uh, that, that if I'm, gonna, if, if I'm gonna do this for you, then essentially what I'm doing is I'm making myself obsolete, or I run the risk of that happening. Um, is that possible? Sure, it's possible. Is it possible that, that somebody could quite literally end up being so great because of your help that they take an opportunity from, from you that you could have had? Is that possible? Sure, it's possible. Anything's possible. This is a messy process. But what, all, I'm, all I can tell you is this, that over time, this is about your building your legacy, building your rep, as it were, building your credibility as a leader. And if you can gain a reputation over time, over the years, as being the person that has elevated so many people, that, that, that's helped to crank out superstar after superstar, essentially what you're doing is, even though this shouldn't be the reason you're doing it, but what you, what you in, in, in fact you're doing is building such currency so that one day there will come a time where there's something significant that you want to do or some opportunity that you want to take, and you need help to get that done, and you ask for that help, and you'll get it. Transactionally, you know, maybe, this oppor- maybe you didn't get, quote-unquote, this opportunity that you were supposed to get, but over time, something really uh, much greater than that would happen. Now, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realist. Uh, is it possible that, that you know, it, it just kind of ends up working against you uh, and you end up feeling bad about the whole thing and I shouldn't have done that? Yes, it's possible. But probably, again, because the, the, the person on the receiving end didn't really, they, they didn't really uh, understand what was going on or they weren't really, uh, you know, to say they weren't worthy of it is a little bit too much of a, of a, of a judgment, I guess. But, uh, but it was probably the wrong person for you to take on because... It just, it just feels, it, it feels great. It feels great when it happens. Now, that's not the only way to take on a GTY project. It's not just within that context. I mean, I've, I've met leaders who, you know, they have their position of authority, um, but there are some leaders that have that position of authority and their main concern is protecting that, that perception that others have of them, that this is the, you know, the, 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 the doer of all action, the end all and be all, the one who makes it all happen. Uh, and then there's the other person who, who, who's still, you know, a CEO or whatever who keeps their position of authority, and what they do is they have this knack, this ability, and this desire to see the talent in other people, not necessarily to take over as CEO, but maybe to go somewhere else and be a better CEO than I am here, or maybe to take on, you know, to, to become the, the, the CFO or another part of the C-suite or take on a different part of the company or a, different, a certain project and do it far better than I ever could and to encourage them to do that, and then, and then have, have the, you know, the presence of mind and the heart to say, look, look at what this, this person has done that, that I never could have done. So it's not just about self-replacement.
Tommy, did it, was there ever a time in the relationship with Steve that you were like, okay, back off, bud? No. Th th there was two parts of my relationship with Farber um, in the GTY relationship. One was just the pure fact of him helping me, you know, get started. You got to get a website. You got to get an agent. You got to get a book. The person that was my book agent. I mean, these agents, they had thousands of chirping birds. Get, pick me, pick me. And he went right to his agent and said, you want to work with me? Yeah, you got to work with him. And that's balls. I mean, that's <laughs> awesome. It's got nice balls. I've heard that before. And, um, <laughs> And so that's, uh, that's the fifth floor relationship yeah. that we're talking about. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Listen, if you're going to, you know, comment on my cheeks, I'm going to comment on your balls. Okay? Uh, yeah. um, but, you know, he, he went to Random House. He went to Michael Palgon. He's the man at Random House. Uh, yeah, you know, you know listen to this guy's story. You know, he went to, you know, his league authorities and said, get this guy a gig. Matter of fact, his son, Saul, is he here? Or is he the back? But he's out there. He, he was the first person that an agent that booked me. I mean, so he, the tactical things of helping, um, he's laughing because Saul's never booked him. <laughs> His that own son. That is the truth. That is the <laughs> honest He's booked me God. four times this year. <laughs> um, this is post um, GTY. Yeah. He booked me four times. How come he didn't so, pick me? <laughs> you know, the, 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 the tactical part, he definitely helped, and that was just in, in, incredible. But the part that, for me, that was more beautiful was, you know, leaving up a people, that was a whole other story. That was very painful and uh, um, more, more pain than I've ever had in my whole life as an organization. And when I, when I left, there's a few people that didn't, didn't allow my departure to be um, beautiful like it should have been. It's a lot of anger, a lot of, a lot of sadness, and, and um, you know, traveling, you know, 80, 90% of the time for three years as CEO and then, you know, getting back into my wife, now hanging out the house all the time with my wife. She was about to kill me because I was gone for three years and now I'm home all the time. And so he really was a coach in my marriage and, my, and, and like just believing me through it. So GTY is not just about how do I elevate someone professionally to the next level. GTY is about how do I love someone so unconditionally that they're going to be a better father, wife, husband, friend, employee, person. Because I tell him Everything. Everything. Not many people in the world I, I can share that thing. And that's, that's what a GTY is all about, when you have a confident that, um, that truly loves you unconditionally. We are going to ask folks later today to really focus on, you know, trying to make that selection or at least put the, the gallant effort in. Um, would you, if someone's struggling with finding someone to take on this project with, um, should they start simple? Should they start in-house? Should they start in their home? Any suggestions? Yeah, actually, we, you, you will have a chance to work on this in your, in your mastermind session, should you choose to. It's, it's, I, I think it's starting um, with, with really kind of looking at the overall, you know, the possibilities, the candidates. You know, I asked you to start thinking about three to five candidates for that. Um, but I think you, where, where you want to go, and, and again, I, I really tried to be under-prescriptive on this because I, I understand it's a very personal, very messy process, or can be. Um, but I would suggest that, that you keep it really really simple and really kind of instinctual, right? So in other words, there are going to be those people on your list that you kind of build your short list based on the people that you know and the people that you believe in and all that, but there's going to be somebody you think about and you just kind of feel it, right? You feel, you feel the, the resonance. That's love for that person, right? And you said, yeah, this is the person I really want to help. And really, this is just about getting you started, right? Because, you know, it's, it's, you can have more than one GTY project, but, but I think a good place to start is somewhere where you really feel the connection, where you really feel that desire. And it's not, so it's not so much an intellectual decision. It's really more of an instinctual one. Do you guys have any questions for, for Tommy or me or Diane? Or? I know a lot about Diane, too. I can tell you. you may never have another one again if you <laughs> behave yourself. What, what, when, yes, yeah. please. Here she comes, coming right here. Talk about rules of engagement. Wait, can you wait for the, yeah. the microphone, please? Thank Talk you. just a little bit about rules of engagement in your G GTY relationship. Rules of engagement, so guidelines, how to... Expectations, how, commitments, yeah. obligations, sense of responsibility <clears throat> that begins to filter into it yeah, over time. Yeah, it's a great question. And, um, you know, there are, 
there there are guidelines that that you can uh, that you can find. I think any any kind of you know coaching or mentoring kind of guidelines. I'd suggest that you look a lot of, at, at a lot of those and, and pick the ones that resonate for you. For me, there there are just a couple of uh, a couple of things that that I think are really critical. So again, you know, I, I try to walk that line between being over and under prescriptive on this. So I'm erring a little bit on the under prescriptive side, but but the the, the the, the fundamental thing is this. I want to help somebody that wants my help. I want to help somebody that, you know, if, I, if I'm investing my, my heart and my emotion and my time, that they're going, to, they're going to take advantage of it. Not in the negative sense of the word, but they're going to take advantage. They're going to do something with it, right? So, you know, with Tommy, when I said, listen, I'm going to introduce you to my agent, I'm going to introduce you to my publisher, you need to meet, tell, you know, tell Palgon the, the bartender's story, tell, you know, tell you know, all this. Well, he, he did it, right? It's, it's almost kind of insulting, or it's not almost insulting, it is insulting. If I, if I extend myself to you, because we all have a limited, you know, number of hours in the day, right? If I take a chunk of my time and my energy and my context and my, you know, all of this stuff, and I, and, I, and I give it to you, and then you go, oh, thanks very much, yeah, yeah. and that's the end of it, then it's, yeah. why? Why would I do that again? I'm going to find somebody that's, that's really going to make use of this. So to me, that's, that's, the, that's the major guideline. And then, but, but then there's, you know, there's other things around, like getting really clear on what it is that you try to accomplish, and and you know, some GTY projects can be a little bit more transactional, and some can be a little bit bigger picture. I mean, it's, it's, it's really up to you. But I think the rule of engagement, for me anyway, it comes back to, to, to you know, choosing somebody that you trust, but you also trust that they're, gonna, they're actually going to put all of themselves into their own, into their own development. If they're, not, if they're not willing to put themselves into themselves, then I'm not willing to put myself into them. Maybe that's not magnanimous enough, but I, I don't know. That's just me. Right here. Come on down. We've got what, this gentleman with the Texas Longhorns here from Houston. I'm curious. Um, you know, the word project kind of connotates a beginning and an end. Yeah. Um, but I know for myself, after reading the book and, and then taking the, uh, the instructions about, you know, a GTY project uh, and reaching out to someone, it was really already someone that I felt some sense of responsibility of wanting to see them succeed. So the project part of it was then sitting down and being a little bit more formal with them about, hey, I'd like to do this. You need to read this book. And hmm. so we've kind of gone through that. I wonder in your relationship and Tommy's success now is maybe the project part over, but there's still, I guess, that fifth floor relationship mm -hmm. that kind of never ends? Yeah, I, I still look at Steve as, as my mentor. I'm, I'm here right now. I mean, I don't travel on Sundays. It, it, you know, for, for me to travel as much as I do, I made a code, an honor with my wife that I don't miss church. I don't care if someone offered me my full pay $25,000 gig on a Sunday. I don't miss Sundays. And so when he asked me to do this, I said, sure. And then I had my assistant book me an early flight on Sunday to get home. And then he found out. He told me to change my ticket. And it really pissed me off because I, you know, I had to be here on Sunday afternoon and miss and dis, you know, dishonor what my promise was to my wife. So there's not many people that I would do that for. I did it once this year, and that's tomorrow because I love them. You, once you have that relationship, um, it, the GTY and the mentor, it, it, it never changes. No matter, because... My next book had totally bomb, and I'm out there, you know, delivering Domino's pizza, you know, and he's still going to be picking me back up, tell me to be the best pizza boy in the world, you know? And ordering it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so there's, a, there's an honor. There's a, there's, an, there's a code of honor. That, that I shared that story about tomorrow. Is the, the honor is that I honor him so much for what he's done for me that he can pretty much tell me what to do, and I would do anything he asked. That's, that's, that's the code of a recipient of the GTY. You know, so project is, you know, it's semantics. Um, how many of you are familiar with Matthew Kelly? Have you read any of Matthew Kelly's books? Dream Manager, and uh, he's a really, really uh, interesting guy. Um, he is, uh, and Pat Lencioni, anybody here ever heard of Pat Lencioni? Uh, five Dysfunctions of a Team, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so Pat and I go way back. In fact, I, I met him. Uh, he was my client uh, at one point. I was at Tom Peters' company. He was at Sybase, and we did a bunch of leadership stuff. That's how we got to know each other. He became a rock star, uh, you know, business writer. Matthew Kelly is essentially, in, in, in essence, uh, Pat's GTY project. Very interesting relationship. Um, and so I talked with, uh, with Matthew about this when I was in the process of writing the book, and he really, really had a problem with the word project. Um, he said, you know, I wish you, uh, you know, I wish you wouldn't call it a project, and, uh, you know, it doesn't have the right connotation, uh, which, I, which I totally understand. And one of the reasons was the project connotes there's a beginning and there's an end, and, and, there's, and there's an outcome. And, and you're, you, know, you either get, achieve the outcome or you don't. You're either, you know, on budget or under budget or over budget, whatever it is. Um, so I'm just using the word project uh, to frame up the conversation. And because it's tangible, a project is a tangible thing. So instead of having a vague idea that we should be helpful to people, I wanted to make it concrete, right? Just put it right into this. But I, I love the question about, you know, is there, there's a very significant uh, relationship between fifth floor relationships and GTY, right? And, and it, I think they're, they're very closely related. I would guess, and, you know, I've got no way of proving this, but I would guess that the most effective and the most significant GTY projects have our fifth floor relationships or become fifth floor relationships or should become fifth floor relationships. And I think that if you look into your fifth floor relationships, you're going to find some really significant opportunities for GTY projects. Yeah. So I think they're, they're very closely related on that level. Yeah. We have another question over here. Lenny? And then you also have one when she's finished. You have one as well. Um, I discovered through this program that I am actually a GTY project which I did not know. Hmm. Um, and so the relationship started where this man was my client and I was helping him shape his, shape his memoir. And through the process, got this incredible respect for him. And then he said, well, I'm going to be doing something else and I want, will you participate in it? And it's business development. So I now realize that um, he, I am his project, hmm. but we're not at a fifth floor level, and you know. So my question is, you know, how do you know where it goes? I mean, I adore him, but you know, where does it go? You know, I'm a project, and I don't want to be a project now. You wanted to go to the fifth floor. I don't know. Mm -hmm. How would I know that? You know, where where do you go with that? What more do you need from this person? Well, we're, we're right in the project, mm -hmm. so um, there's another three weeks to go, or three more. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure Tommy has something to say about how you can, how you can develop that into, or see if there's a, a way or if it's a possibility or a desire to develop it into a fifth-floor relationship. But I also think that it's, uh, I, I'm a big believer in, in making, uh, making the unspoken spoken whenever possible, making the, the, you know, the intangible tangible. So one way of doing that is to, is to just use the language and say, listen, here's what I've noticed, just what you're sharing with us. Here's what I've noticed. You know, there's this GTY project, here's what it is, it takes you 30 seconds to describe it, and I kind of see us as having that same, you know, I'm kind of your GTY project, and, and I'd like just, just what you just said here, right? And, and that opens the door to the conversation, and you're going to find out pretty quickly if you've got, you know, somebody that's, uh, that's willing to reciprocate and, and to explore that. Yeah. I, I actually chose a lot of the people that I wanted to be on the fifth floor with. I wrote a whole chapter and book about, I'm a big Yankees fan, and my 1977 New York Yankees were the best. Chris Chambliss, Mickey Rivers, Bogey Dent, Greg Nettles. And so I think every human being should have a greatest hits like Yankee team. Uh, instead of having Chris Chambliss, Mickey Rivers, Bucky Dent, Thurman Munson, you have people in your lives, a baseball team of all-stars that are coaching you. And some of them could be GTY projects and some of them are just mentors. But for me, I wanted a spiritual mentor. For me also is I want to be faithful and to my wife and an and obedient husband. And so I have a guy that really works in my marriage. Farber's, uh, he's my, my Greg Nettles, my third baseman. And so he's my, you know, my GTY. I have someone that I'm really working my diet and, you know, my exercise and keeping healthy. So I have like six or seven people in my life that I've chosen and I spend time with and I call them. They're like my board of advisors, board of directors, and those people in your life that, that, that you're vulnerable with and you share and you surround yourself with them. That's every person needs to have mentors. And a lot of those relationships have become 
fifth floor because when you're so vulnerable and you share and then they share and they mentor, those relationships grow authentically to, to, to loving relationships. You actually answered my second question, which is, can you be a project and a mentor at the same time? So thank yeah, you for sure that. Can. Yeah, sure can. We did have one more question over here. You had your hand up before. If you just want to pass the mic over, that's perfect. So uh, originally, Stephen and I got to talk this morning about how everything works out and it's always perfect, right? It, it always kind of works out for a reason. And sometimes you don't really understand and know why, where, where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there. But it always just kind of seems to work out and we get to help each other. So in being able to say this, one of the things that you said earlier was about how, you know, you really want the rule to be how that person has to be able to kind of want that and that's somebody that needs to get back to you. And I disagree a little bit. You know, I've been extraordinarily blessed in my life. And I have a great company and I have a tremendous amount of employees that work for me that do a great, great, great job. And I never really got GTY because I didn't know that that's what I did, but I just really tried to give that and I really tried to build every person in my company and every part and every piece. And I didn't know really what I was doing or why I was doing it. I just kind of felt that that was the right thing to do. And it wasn't a thing that said, okay, well, it's a, it's a project and I got to work on this guy and I got to do this and it's got to be two things and then there's three things in a phase and all that kind of stuff. It was just me being, knowing that if I could help this person and, and whatever I could do in any way that I could be able to help them, whatever that was going to be, then ultimately it probably benefited me and it made me who I am because I'll tell you, I would not be standing here today if it wasn't for the people in my life that I tried to help that were able to go to me and be able to help me do what I do every single day, every day. And I've forgotten, really, in the last six or eight months because I've kind of checked out. I've kind of moved on a little bit in, in what I've done and I'm not quite sure where I want to go and what's next in my life and those kinds of things. But it brings back to me this home place of, you know, the only reason why I got to where I was is because I was able to give. And it wasn't because they asked, and it wasn't because they were a project, and it wasn't because I said, okay, well, hold on, wait a minute, let me see, what can you do, and how is this project gonna work for me, and do you wanna work with me? There was people that I worked with that didn't want my help, but I could see something in them, and I said, nah, I'm gonna keep working on that, I'm gonna keep working on that, I'm gonna keep working on that, I'm gonna keep working on that. And then ultimately, it comes and it turns around. So, you know, I think there's this thing where you go back and forth uh -huh. and it is this, you know, trying to define it and put it on paper says, you know, we're going to call it a project and we're going to do this. But, you know, this whole thing started with love. We started with love. It all started with love. I think GTY is love. I think it's about mm -hmm. sharing and giving to all those people in your life about that part of love. And whether you give that or whether you receive it back it doesn't really matter because ultimately it will come back around mm. and that wind will come back around and it will propel you and push you to exactly where you want to be yeah. so yeah thank you and, very much and you know mike it uh it might surprise you to hear me say this because you started out by saying that maybe you disagree with me a little bit uh on this and and so what might surprise you is that i absolutely 100 percent agree with what you just said um and here's and here's the thing um I'm going, uh, I'm, again, I, I think by selection, by self-selection, the, the folks in this room for this summit, uh, you, you're here because there's, there's a part of you, and maybe even a huge part of you, that's exactly what, what Mike just described. Is you, you're trying to raise people up. You, you're, you're a giving person. You want to help change things for the better. And, and there are a lot of people, <laughs> we also know, who are not like that. And we want to get them there, right? So my thinking behind the, the whole project was to, if, again, starting with something tangible in order to kind of train ourselves to be this way for everybody, right? And, and the one thing I want to be really clear that I, I'm, that, that I didn't um, give you the wrong impression or misspeak, what I meant to say, and, and I'm pretty sure that, that, that you, you understand this, I just want to be absolutely clear on it. When I said, I'm going to invest myself in you, and, and I want you to take full advantage of it, 
that doesn't, if you don't, I'm not looking for anything in return from you. I, I don't want you to, you know, you don't need to, you know, to report back to me. You don't need to give me, a, you know, to have a sit down. You just need to do something for yourself. Um, and if I'm, if I'm f- trying to find that one person that I can, that I can even you know, pour myself into even more. Listen, I'm a helpful guy. I think, you know, you'll, you'll meet a lot of people in this room that will, that will tell you that, that'll, that'll describe me that way. Uh, this is about turning the temperature up, you know, really significantly with one or two people so you, can, so you immerse yourself in that experience. Again, hopefully for the end result that we can be that way for more people just more naturally all, all the time. So I do think it is, it is a give and take. It's an interplay, and, and, uh, and, it, and it's something, you know, it's a learning process. I mean, that's, that's really the idea. But there's, you know, there was, there's one, if I, if I can ask Tommy one, one last question. Um, thank you, my dear. Um, you know, the, you may have recalled, uh, you may recall from, from our little talk this morning that, that this is unconditional. I, I haven't asked uh, Tommy for anything in return. Um, it, this wasn't a, it's not, it's not a quid pro quo. It's not like, hey, Tommy, you know, I will... Uh, <laughs> I will connect you with the proper people. Then one day, uh, there will come a time I will ask you for a favor. It's not, it's not like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> but there is... Uh, we haven't had that talk yet. It's okay. <laughs> it's uh, but there, there, is, there is one condition. There is one condition, and that is, you know, that, that you take on a G2I project of your own. And, and I've been asking Tommy for, you know, quite some time, so who's your G2I project going to be? I mean, come on, man, pay up. Pay up by passing it forward. So I'm, I, I'm just curious to know kind of where, where you are in that process, buddy. So I, was, I, was, I knew this question was going to come. So the truth is, I don't, ha- I don't have one. But that's going to change uh, soon. Um, maybe even today. Um, my problem is that um, I've had such a perfect experience being a recipient of a GTY mentor that I have such high expectations of what I want to find in someone, the work ethic and the tenacity and the gratefulness and the, um, the purpose and the authenticity. You know, I, I, I'm thinking about leaving the sp- speaking circuit. I've told him the other day, I, I think there's a lot of phonies and there's like 99% self-promoters and um, I have a hard time with it and I'm trying to find out how do you stay authentic giving the same message every day, the, you know, four cities a week? It's, it's challenging. And, and, you know, so how do you find someone that wants to do what I want to do that's authentic and genuine? So I have these high standards. And so the last three years, he's been up my, you know, who's your GTY? Who's your GTY? Ask me, ask me. And I, and, I, and I haven't found, you know, that person. And I thought I had, and I'm just so selective. Kind of like when I was looking for a wife, I had this perfect list. And just doesn't exist, you know. Um, but something happened to me a, a month ago that uh, I just told Farber this this morning. So this is kind of ad lib. But uh, when I first got engaged to Jill, I was run, I was like making seventy thousand dollars a year running a nonprofit. I thought that was a shitload of money, and <laughs> you know, we were looking for homes and we looked in the area of town that that you know we were gonna live in. And she showed me this area. She grew up there. Let me show you this area of town that, you know, and we, we looked at these beautiful homes and beautiful areas, and, and we, could, we can't even afford one month payment, let alone buying the house. We moved about an hour south, and, you know, God's just so blessed me the last year. We, we, I bought that dream house for my wife last month, um, that one that she showed me that it was her favorite home. And we moved in last month, and it was an incredible experience just moving this home and having our kids there and just so blessed and thankful for the, you know, just the gifts. And uh, then I got a phone call like two days after you moved in. You're still unpacking, you're painting, you're fixing up. And it was the general manager of a hotel in Denver named Marcel Pitten. And he is the GM of the, one of the nicest hotel in Denver, like the old brown palace. Every U.S. president stayed there. It's a, it's a treasure. And he's been a great mentor and friend, very generous to me. And he said, I have a favor for you. I need you to come have lunch today and to meet one, a kid that I'm mentoring. And I wanted to say no, because I'm painting, I'm fixing up, I'm unpacking. You know how it is when you move. I got three kids. I'm, I'm, I took a week off to get this house ready before I got back on the road. And, but I didn't say no. I said yes, because I have a lot of respect for Marcel. But I'm bitching the whole way in the shower, getting paint out of my nails, getting my coat and jacket on, and getting to the Brown Palace. And 
I walk into the lobby and I see Marcel and he's very thankful I showed up and he introduced me to a man that he's been mentoring for the last couple, you know, the last year or so. And as soon as I, and Marcel didn't tell me anything about this gentleman, except his name was Ethan. So I meet Ethan and um, I can automatically tell that he's, he's an athlete. He's probably early 30s, very cut, very tough. But when he shook my hand and said hello, he couldn't look me in the eye. He was like a beat up dog. He, his self-confidence was so low. And I sensed that there was something. And I soon realized that God wanted me to be at this lunch. We walked into the restaurant. He, Marcel went to the back of the room where no one was there and we started talking. And Marcel looks at me and says, I've been mentoring this kid, Ethan. He's remarkable. And he has a story he wants to share with you. So in the back of my head, I have to admit, I had 12 contractors. I got a plumber, electrician, a <laughs> painter. I got a guy building a freaking like playground set, like the mulch guy. I, they're all in my house. And I'm in the head doing all the things I got to do at this house. And then Ethan starts talking. And as he was talking, I couldn't hear what he was saying because he was like whispering. He, he was so soft-spoken. He was so genuine, methodical that he was telling me his life story if, that he was a, basically an all-American basketball player when he was right out of high school. Got recruited to some of the top basketball schools in the country as a point guard. Division one, you know, any, any kid's dream. Started getting cocky a little bit, started getting arrogant a little bit, started, started drinking a little bit, started doing a little bit of drugs. He was telling me, whispering. I was hanging on every word. And um, gets kicked off one team, gets transferred to another school, gets kicked off another team, all about drugs, alcohol, attitude, arrogance, cocky. Gets kicked off another team. Gets kicked off three or four teams, and finally he's at his last team, and he, he gains 30 pounds. He's doing tons of drugs. He's doing alcohol. And one night he got totally wasted and got in a car, and he's, I'm, lit, I'm hanging on every word, and he says he drove down the road 70 miles per hour, and I hit a car head on, killed the guy. And automatically, I, I forgot about my landscaper and you know, all, the, all the things at home, and I'm just listening, and the way he was talking, he was so beautiful. He was so authentic. He was so genuine, and that could have been anybody. And I just got tears in my eyes listening to this guy's story, and he said he woke up, blanked out. He didn't remember anything. Went to the hospital. The nurse told him that he killed somebody. And he got sentenced to 10 years in prison. Served his time. Got out a little early of good behavior. Been on parole with an ankle bracelet for the last five years. Went to Johnson Wales University. Got a degree. Graduated top of his class. Two days later, I did the research. I called the president because I used to be on the board of directors of Johnson Wales. And Betty Metaskey, the president of that school, was 36 years. She gave six presidential awards in six years. She just retired this year and gave this Ethan kid the presidential award. Said, she told me that he, he was his greatest student. So here's a kid that got out of prison, second chance. He, he um, got, a, got a degree, but he can't get a job. No one will hire him because he's got a criminal record. He killed somebody. And even Marcel, who's the general manager of this hotel, wouldn't hire him, told me he couldn't hire him because his owners wouldn't let someone with the criminal record. And so he shared with me more. And as I kind of peeled back the onion and started asking him questions, he talked about the guilt he has and the sadness. He's tried to um, contact the, the widow over years, and um, she wants nothing to do with him. Matter of fact, she has a restraining order on him because no letters, no phone calls. She doesn't want to forgive him. So I'm just listening to the story, and I just, I, I, I'm falling in love with this kid. It's very, very similar how I felt when I met Farber for the first time, where you just love this man. And I got home that, that night, driving home, and I was telling my wife all about Ethan, and I was just crying. I just felt that God wanted me to be in his life. So I invited him to a ball game, took him to meet my kids, and went to ice cream with my kids and spent time with them. And he'd share with me that he wants to get in the speaking business, that he wants to share his message of drunk driving and drugs and alcohol and choices and uh, redemption and forgiveness. He wants to share it with high school kids and college kids. And he read my book and was so moved by my story. And 
he asked for my help at, at the lunch, he, the first lunch. And I looked at him, and of course I wanted to say yes, but it's amazing. It just flew through me, and I said, I, I can't help you. And he said, why? I says, because you haven't forgiven yourself. He said, I haven't. And I said, you're forgiven. That woman might not have forgiven you, but you're forgiven. And you've got to forgive yourself because if you're going to change lives and tell your story, you've got to forgive yourself. And no one ever told that. So I run around the table, I gave him a hug, and, and I said, you're a beautiful man, Ethan, and you touched my heart. And thank you for sharing your story. And I built a great relationship with over the last 30 days. And then when Farber told me I can come speak here, he said I could take one free guest. So I invited him, and he's sitting in this room. And he's my G2I project, Ethan, right here. truth is, if Marcel Pitton, the general manager of the Brown Palace, called me up in the middle of like 12 different contractors and said, well, I'm mentoring a kid that killed somebody and served 10 years in prison. He's got an ankle bracelet on. Can you come down and have lunch with him? I might not have taken that lunch as much as I want to say I would have, but I just might not have. And the lesson that I learned with Ethan is that we all have sins, we, we, we all make mistakes, and we all, have, we all have done things we shouldn't have done. But redemption is the most beautiful form of love and forgiveness and second chances. And this kid has got a great story. And he's gonna go around America, to high school to high school, college to college, and he's gonna share his message of forgiveness and responsibility and attitude, and he's gonna change the world. And as Steve Farber gave me a platform to share my message with the world, I'm going to give this guy the platform to do the same thing. For the last three years, Farber's been asking me, who's my D2I project? And I never felt anyone that was deserving of it until I met you. And your story is really beautiful. And um, this was his first trip. You know, he got a piece of paper. We had to call his parole officer. This is, this is really big for him being here. And he's very much overwhelmed. And I would love every single person in this room to give this guy so much love and so much yeah. encouragement over the next day because he's about to change the world. Yeah. Where do you go from there, really? Um, <clears throat> all right, so listen, I, I, that, was, that was phenomenal. Uh, thank you so much, Tommy. Um, and Diane, thank you for, for uh, asking us what kind of tree we'd like to be and helping in other ways. Uh, uh, th this, was really, this was really phenomenal.